The question that I have is, how do you draw free body diagram for rigid bodies? So here is a brief description of how we develop a free body diagram uh, that we need for analysis. First, we want to decide on the part of the structure to be analyzed. We'll call this as the body to be analyzed. In this example, that's the beam. We want to analyze this beam. Next, you want to mark all of the forces acting on that body. So generally, these forces will consist of uh, a set of, set of known forces, which are these externally applied forces like the distributed force and the point load and the concentrated moment that I have in this example, and a set of unknown forces, which are generally the support reactions, AX, AY, and MA. So for known forces, you want to mark the values like, for example, you want to put down the value of this distributed load, point load, and the uh, bending moment uh, with proper units, all right? And mark also the directions. For example, this distributed load is acting vertically down, point load is acting vertically down here, and the bending moment is acting clockwise at point B. So you want to mark the directions with uh, uh, appropriate arrows. And you want to do the same for the unknown forces. You want to mark the directions like I have shown over here. And you want to mark, you want to label these forces. So here, for example, I call the horizontal force at point A as AX, and the vertical force at point A as AY, and the moment at point A as MA. And obviously, these are unknown forces, so we don't have numbers yet, but call them by a suitable label. Finally, to complete the free body diagram, you want to put down all of the geometrical details. In general, these geometrical details will consist of linear dimensions, angles, ratios, and things like that. In this example, the, the relevant geometrical details are simply the linear dimensions L1, L2, L3, and L4, right? But if the, you have a point load acting at a certain angle, you want to mark the angle as well. As we begin to do some examples, you'll see in some cases your supports could be inclined and in some cases your beam itself could be inclined. The angles become important in uh, cases like those. The use of a free body diagram is to write down the equilibrium equations. So the bottom line is that the free body diagram must be complete and self-sufficient that you could write down all equilibrium equations, force as well as moment simply by referring to the free body diagram without having to go back to the original structure for some details like the length or the value of a force. Just keep in mind that in some cases you could draw, draw the free body diagram right on the original picture. When you do, you make sure that the free body diagram is very clear and all of the details can be read off without uh, confusions.